Hello everybody, this is uh, National Master Genghis Sassman from Northern Cyprus. Uh, today's topic is how to draw against a strong Grand Master. Um, my opponent is uh, Grand Master Nicholas Pert from England and um, he actually won the World under 18 championship in 1998 and when I played him in 2012 he was rated 2570 and I was about 20, 2150 and um, we played in the London League no increments um, not um, a FIDE rated game but an ECF English Chess Federation rated game uh, he was playing for Wood Green, my former team, and I was playing for Cavendish 2. So um, let's start off. I'm white. Um, Nicholas Pert is black. And um, Nicholas decided to um, play the Slav defense and I wanted to simplify things so I went for the exchange variation um, on move 3 knight f3 is actually more popular um, but because I didn't want to go into any complications against against such a strong player um, I went for the simplifying move C takes D5. So we've reached um, a symmetrical position. Of, um, nobody has any pawn majorities on, on either wing. And we're just um, both developing our pieces in a good way. Um, I, I played an early rook C1 because um, the only open file is um, the C file. I played E3 so I can develop my last minor piece, my bishop, which I did now. And then um, my opponent played knight H5, uh, trying to take my bishop uh, giving himself the bishop pair, which you might know is very important in chess, um, especially in open positions. So it's not um, um, a completely open position now, but later on it might be. And I can't really stop him from taking my bishop, but I didn't want to um, let him take my bishop on f4, so I played bishop e5. And I don't damage my pawn structure, whereas if I just castle, um, this would be um, uh, a bad pawn structure. Sometimes it can be good, but um, I didn't want to get into it in this position. So I played bishop e5. I leave his knight misplaced on the wing and if he does take one I just take with my knight I attack his knight he has to come back and um, I have a decent I have a good game actually so um, as he um, uh, knew this he didn't um, uh, take my, my bishop he just played a6 um, if he had played f6 um, he would be um, weakening his, um, his structure a bit. Um, this e6 pawn could come under pressure later on. So he just played a6, wishing to um, play um, b5 in the future. I castled, as did he. And I played a similar move, a3. As it's a symmetrical position, the ideas um, are usually the same for both sides. Um, if black can, he wants to get a knight on c4, and white wants to get a knight on c5. And he's developing his rook like I did a few moves ago. And then I played um, the pawn break in the center, e4. And 
I'm saying I'm not afraid of having an isolated pawn because if he did take, then um, my deep pawn would be isolated and um, it would uh, probably become a target for black and I would need to avoid uh, minor piece exchanges because this would just weaken my um, isolated pawn. Um, but in return, I would get peace activity. And this is what the player with the isolated pawn wants to have, peace activity. Because my pieces um, have more options than my opponents. Anyway, um, when I played e4, uh, that was when he decided to take my bishop. So I took with my knight. Um, my queen's attacking the h5 knight. So he... Um, advances it and now I um, decide to um, go for a symmetrical um, position which was the same in the beginning I take on d5 he takes that white squared bishop is is quite nice so is my knight actually but I decide to just um, simplify again I just took his bishop and then activated my queen, attacking his knight on f4. And he takes my bishop, as, it's, as it is a good bishop. And then he plays um, bishop f6. And we've reached a position where it's, um, there's a bit of a bishop versus knight battle going on. Um, I do need to be careful as his bishop is quite good. Um, although um, my knight can be quite useful too. So he has a, a very small advantage and not enough to win, um, but I do need to be on my toes. So I, I take the uh, e-file. Um, he allows me because he plays rook fd8. He's protecting his d5 pawn. He's overprotecting his d5 pawn actually. So it could mean he might I want to move his queen because his rook would then be protecting it. So um, I decide to um, give my um, king an escape route in case of any background checks with any rooks or queens. I play g3. Um, my king can then play to g2, which is uh, the light square. And it's the opposite color of his bishop, meaning... He can't check me with his bishop if I come to g2. And he, he, he plays a similar move. I move my king up and then he expands on the queen side with b5. I play knight e2, offer an exchange of rooks. Um, he doesn't take on c1. Uh, he just plays uh, rook c4. And he does want me to actually... Uh, take like this and then he'll probably take with the deep pawn you have a queen side uh, three to two majority with an isolated pawn for myself uh, easy target um, all these pieces would be um, attacking my pawn so um, it's not a position I want to get myself into so I play b3 um, I, I mean, I'm also stopping him from doubling on the on the C file. His other rook would want to come there. So when I play B3, uh, I'm not giving him this chance, and um, I'm, I'm I'm kicking them out of this um, very good uh, C4 square, which is an outpost for his rook. And he has to make a decision, and he takes. I take. So I've taken the C file and then he takes the E file. Uh, I play knight C3 because my knight's not on um, the best square. I want to make it more active. He doubles um, with queen E6. So he's got two heavy pieces on the E file. Uh, and then I play queen F3. Um, so why did I play queen F3? You can pause the video if you like. I am dropping the d4 pawn. 
Um, I played it um, because I'm um, I'm giving the d4 pawn by taking the d5 pawn and I'm just simplifying the position, which is my general strategy. Um, my opponent hasn't taken any big risks in this symmetrical uh, structure um, and I haven't done the same either. So um, we've just been exchanging pieces off and it's, um, it's been an equal position an equal game so far. He decides to take on my central pawn, as do I, and then he attacks my knight, I attack his queen, and then he plays queen e7, and he's attacking my a3 pawn. So I don't want to play b4 because this will put my pawns on the dark squares and later this um, bishop can um, attack these pawns at the right time so um, i've got a, i see an opportunity to offer an exchange of pawns which he accepts again it's all part of the simplific simplification process uh, he plays bishop e5 and you can pause uh, the video and, and see what you would play here. Um, it's not a super move, but it's a nice um, defensive move and it can turn out to be um, offensive. Um, it's rook c4. So I'm protecting the a4 pawn before it's even attacked. Um, I, if he does take on my knight, I, can, I have the option of taking with my rook. Um, and it's important to know your weaknesses in chess, uh, in, a, in a chess game. So, and we need to um, protect these weaknesses and then the opposite is, is, is true too. We need to see our opponent's weaknesses and try and take advantage of them. This is... Um, a very important uh, philosophy in chess. So he doubles on the d-file, I, I offer an exchange, I'm also attacking his a6 pawn, which is weak. Uh, he takes and then just offers an exchange of rooks. Uh, if he wanted to go for a win and not uh, simplify the position, and he played rook a8, um, he would be, his rook would be passive. My rook would be active, uh, my rook would be controlling more squares on the chessboard than his rook, and there's potential for him to lose this pawn actually without him um, taking my one. So, um, my opponent, as I said, is not taking any unnecessary risks to win the game, and I, I'm not doing. I'm not taking them either. So I exchange rooks, and now in the end game, it's very important, especially after queens are exchanged, um, we need to activate our kings, so they need to contribute to the game. And this can be the difference between a, um, a win and a draw, or a draw or a defeat. So I just bring my king straight out very quickly. Uh, he's trying to come to um, the center too, but my one is faster. Now, um, at this, after this move, um, I'll just give you a bit of context we were not playing with um, a digital clock, so there were no uh, increments. Uh, my opponent had about seven minutes left, um, and I had 12 minutes. Uh, you would lose on time um, because there would be no increments, uh, there would be no other time. Um, so we were under time pressure, and I offered my draw, uh, my, I offered my opponent a draw, um, but I also calculated um, if he had taken on f4 um, that 
I would have some good chances and this would be because of my active king. My king is, if we draw a line between the fourth rank and the fifth rank, I'm actually in his territory and he does, he's not in mine. These two pawns, double pawns, are a handicap, um, but my king is very um, well placed and he will be fighting for a draw here because in the future it wouldn't be good for him to push this A pawn because my king can collect it at the right time and um, I could possibly go, go, for, go and try and take these pawns if we reach like a Zugzuang where whichever move um, he made would be bad for him. So um, my opponent thought for about two minutes and then um, accepted my offer and I can say that this was actually my um, best result um, so far in my chess career um, and the computer is showing that this is um, actually a winning position um, if he had continued and exchanged um, his bishop for my knight. Now um, what I want to say about this game is um, uh, you need to, I advise you to simplify against um, a, a very strong player. Avoid complications, which is what I did um, in the, by my opening choice. As I said, I could have played knight f3 and it could have been, it would have been imbalanced. Uh, it wouldn't have been a symmetrical pawn structure. I decided to just get a symmetrical position. Um, and exchange pieces as long as your position doesn't get bad. Um, because sometimes you can exchange pieces and end up um, in, a, in a worse position, even though the material is equal. Uh, sensible piece development is, is always good. And stopping your opponent's plans. Uh, I hope you have um, taken something um, away from this and please leave any uh, questions or comments you, um, you may uh, have. Uh, thank you for listening.